Before it was an anime, Sinran Kagura was first a video game series and then a manga. The setup is simple. Two rival shinobi schools exist, one representing the light and the other the dark. These schools are essentially a metaphor for the Chinese concept of yin and yang, that being, neither school is wholly good nor purely evil. Each school houses a super ninja scroll and they both operate in complete secrecy, though through different fashions. The light shinobi work in plain sight, yet hide themselves from those around them using shinobi camouflage techniques, while the dark shinobi have chosen to hide their training facility in a remote location away from the rest of the populace entirely. It's a completely generic setup, borderline juvenile, but then again I highly doubt anyone is coming to Senran Kagura for anything more than hot ninja girls battling it out in bikinis. The characters are likable enough, though they are a bit too one-dimensional. The main protagonist is a novice shinobi named Asuka, who also just so happens to be the daughter of the legendary shinobi Hanzo. As such, Asuka is little more than a bumbling idiot with a good heart, but of course she also houses great latent power deep within. As you would expect, Asuka's power blossoms over the course of the series, ultimately making her one of, if not the most powerful shinobi in her school. But sadly, this power arc isn't really well done, nor does the lady merging of her power feel emotionally impacting. Still, Asuka's voice, design, and personality do have a strange old-school sense of charm. And she even reminds me a fair bit of Plug Cryostat from Fightipatsu Juden-chan. She's serviceable as a protagonist, but also easily forgettable. Asuka's fellow peers are quite similar in that respect. Each light shinobi has their own unique personality quirks and design, which at base level are appreciable. Personally, I wound up the most attached to Katsuragi, whose bubbly attitude injected some much needed fun into the series on a regular basis. She's also quite pretty and kicks a lot of butt using only her feet, which is always a plus. The other light shinobi are fairly well designed, but the series doesn't give each of them enough time to grow and develop on their own, making them just as forgettable as Asuka herself. It's sort of disappointing, because with a little more treatment, this cast could actually be something special. The counterpart Dark Shinobi are surprisingly decently developed for bad guys, which at times makes you want to root for them instead of the actual heroes. It was nice to see Senran Kagura give these characters some spotlight all to themselves. It's just unfortunate that once again, there wasn't enough of it to let these Shinobi develop fully or allow one to become highly attached to them. Even more unfortunate were the pace-halting backstories for these characters, showcasing their motivations. They were shoehorned into the last two episodes of the series, and while appreciated, these backstories killed all sense of tension and momentum that the series was ramping up to, and also they were just dreadfully boring and utterly cliched. Speaking of which, we might as well talk about the fan service of the show and how it completely clashes with the drama. Sinran Kagura aims to tell a serious and dramatic story, albeit a very simplistic and boring one, but also places its primary cast into skimpy and revealing clothing at every opportunity. Each shinobi has their own Sailor Moon style transformation that ends up placing them in bikinis which apparently harnesses their true power. In the aforementioned last two episodes, which were easily the most dramatic of all, both the entire cast of the Dark and Light Shinobi schools were running around the entire time in these bikinis. It's hard to take any of the stories seriously when this is occurring. Echi series that aim to tell a more serious tale are nothing new, it's just that Senran Kagura's know-how of when to include these moments is the least tactful approach I've ever seen. Exploitative anime is fine so long as you can accept it for what it is and not take it offensively. There's plenty enough room for amazing anime that tell a very serious and incredible story like Madoka Magica, and still enough room for anime series that appeal to basic instincts and satiate animalistic tendencies like Queen's Blade. However, Sinran Kagura attempts to blend the two and fails to appeal to either demographic. Queen's Blade is a much better example of an ecchi anime that had a decent storyline that one could sort of get behind. Simran Kagura's cliché story and refusal to show actual nudity, yet throw bikinis and butt shots in our faces non-stop make it a jumbled mess of incomprehensible garbage. Overall, Simran Kagura is remarkably skippable. The show's art style is too simplistic, the story is cliché and boring, and the combat fails to deliver. What's worse is that you can't even enjoy the series on a base level for edginess because it lacks the cojones to deliver the actual goods. Even for those who have exhausted every form of edgy anime out there, or even all anime series in existence, I don't recommend watching this show. It's not completely bad, 
but it's really not worth the price or effort. You'd be better off just going outside or doing something else that doesn't involve anime at all. I give Sinran Kagura 2 out of 5 stars and a rating of poor.